2005, and someone draws a dozen cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, and a couple of weeks later a bunch of deliberately hypersensitive Muslims throw their toys out of the pram, the West flinches at the deranged nature of this disproportionate and irrational response. Smelling the weakness, all of the crazies come out to capitalise on what they perceive as a moment of weakness, and they score their victory over free speech. And since then, the media corporations have been walking around on eggshells, terrified of causing offence and self-censoring for the past five years. 2010. Some smug Muslims try to continue these tactics and issue some more death threats to enhance the chilling effects on free speech and to shelter their religion from criticism. But it's not going to work this time. Enough is enough. Things are different now, for we are pissed with how the media gave this terrible example by handing a free pass of exemption of criticism to the Muslims simply because they appear in murderous mobs at the slightest criticism. This time there is a popular backlash and Draw Muhammad Day is spawned. Keen to throw what weight I have to the greatest effect in supporting this issue, I did what I had to do. For I have no control over anyone. I can tell no one what to do. If people choose to follow me, they do it of their own vocation, and they vote with their feet. All I can do is lead by example, to lead from the front, and to fearlessly invite with full knowledge that the anonymity cannot last forever, the lion's share of the risk upon myself, to inspire by example those that would be willing to act, to regain the level playing field of free speech. For within the hands of those who are willing to act and no others lies the balance of the failure or the success of this venture. I did what I had to do. I incurred, without clear foresight of the outcome, the risks that needed to be suffered. I defiantly exercised my freedom of speech and made half a dozen videos scoring the best part of a million hits, for want of a better word, defiantly and publicly pissing in the porridge of the hypersensitive mob. Going up to and including aptly labelling a caricature of their prophet as a paedophile and then burning it. Just as a token act of reciprocation of how the angry Islamic mobs burn flags. While all the time littering this media with invitations for those bloodthirsty mobs to do their worst. Just to give them a sense that free men have drawn a line here. And that we will no longer yield our free speech to angry mobs. And if their religion isn't cool with that, if their religion is incompatible with free speech, then their religion is incompatible with the Western world. And what have we heard out of the Muslim world? The Muslim world that went absolutely ballistic over a few cartoons. What have they done in response to this defiant and public throwdown? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And not even the most timid peep. Given their previous actions, what more needs to be said than you opportunistic cowards? Yeah, now we see the score. Happy to intimidate decent, honest, civilized folk with death threats when you think you can get away with it. But too cowardly to try such tactics when someone publicly and defiantly calls bullshit on you. When you know you will experience a disproportionate free speech backlash. Well, too bad. It's too late. You brought this upon yourself by the actions of your own hands. Now it's our time. Now we shore up free speech to counter those who would try to undermine it with death threats. We expose these cowards by standing up and demonstrating that we are not afraid, and that by our example, by our unfaltering example, we demonstrate to everyone else that there is nothing to be afraid of, that these death threats come from nothing but opportunistic cowards. For too long has our free speech been eroded, simply through a communal lack of will to draw a line. And yes, in that charge, I am as guilty as the next man. But no more. This is now our time. By our actions do we level the playing field of free speech, and secure it for the future. By our actions do we show that the open marketplace of ideas will exercise its freedom of speech mercilessly against those who would try to inhibit it by issuing death threats.